Welcome back to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a problem a lot of people have been struggling with, which is the first quest after the prologue of the game, which says investigate Narratus's folly. This requires us to speak to 10 nobles, but it's really hard to find these people and today I'm going to show you a really easy way to do that and we're going to go through how you can do this yourself. It's very simple, the game just doesn't explain how it works very well in my opinion. So from the campaign screen, what you're going to want to do is press the end key, which brings up our encyclopedia. If you're playing on console, another way of accessing it is by going to your clan and then just pressing your profile picture like so, and then you can just press home on here and we get the uh, encyclopedia back up. So this encyclopedia is like the most useful resource in the entire game. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the hero section just here and then you'll get a bunch of people that exist within the game, like a bunch of NPC characters that have been named. You're gonna scroll down on the left hand side and you're gonna click on faction leaders. Most of the people we need to speak to that are nobles who know about this battle of Nerezim's folly are going to be one of the faction leaders here. So what you can do is you can click on one of these people. For example, Duthert, if we click on him, he's one of the people we need to speak to who we haven't spoken to yet. Now, if you have a look here, it says he was last seen near Varchleg. So if we click on Varchleg just here, it will then show us where that is on the map if we press the track button over here. So whenever you want to find a character who you need for a quest um, and you don't know where they are, just have a look on this encyclopedia at that NPC. And then if we exit out here, we can see on the top left that Varchek has been kind of highlighted for us. So if we zoom all the way out, we'll see that Varchek is on the other side of the map all the way over here. So you, want, you might want to start off by finding NPCs who are a little bit closer to you who you can talk to first. But essentially, this quest is going to lead you around this entire map, speaking to every single leader of the different factions and clans of those factions and asking them about their side of the story with the war. So you can kind of get like an overall backstory for the the background of what actually happened and make up your own mind maybe about which faction you want to join after that. So it's really important for the storyline to actually do this quest. But as you can see, I've only spoken to two nobles so far out of the 10 we need to speak to. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go over a list with you of all the NPCs that you actually need to go and speak to. So you can write a list right now, get a pen and paper with you, and uh, you can note them all down. And you can do this in any order, by the way. So we need to speak to Kaladog, who's the ruler of Batania. And then we need to speak to Durfurt, as I just said, he's the ruler of Vlandia. We then need to speak to Dwayne of Jawal. And just so you guys know, all these different clans are represented on the map, so you know roughly where you're going to find them. For example, you can see their faction banner is on the bottom desert side of the map, while the Valadians are all the way over here with this red banner. The next person we need to speak to is Garios, who is in the Western Empire. He rules that area. And sometimes you might find people get taken prisoner, depending on what the AI are doing in your game. Um, and as we go in through this video, I'll explain how you can deal with that and still find these people in prison and so on. Um, the next guy we need to speak to is Lucian, who is the ruler of the Northern Empire, as you can see. And then after that, we need to speak to Mon Chug, who is the ruler of the Kuzate. And you can also join these people and join their army and battle with them if you like. However, I recommend doing that after you've actually done the quest. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll get attacked by the other army. Then we need to speak to Ragnvad, who is one of the rulers in Sturgia, in the north snowy area of the map. After that, we can speak to Ragia, who is the ruler of the Southern Empire. She's actually the Empress there, so you can even join her army if you want. And she should be pretty much close to you when you actually start the game. 
Um, and then there is Unquid, who is the ruler of the Azurai in the South Desert area. And these are just the leaders of the faction. So another thing you can do is if you click on just the noble occupation here, you'll find a bunch of other people that you can also speak to. Um, what will sometimes happen if you question any NPC or noble about the war, they will say, oh, I don't know anything about that. I wasn't there. But if you speak to this person, they'll know something about it. And now I'm going to actually go and do it myself. So if you like and you're following along with this Let's Play, you can just read the storyline. But if you guys found this video helpful, please do give it a like. Um, and we're going to carry on and just read the storyline for ourselves now. And in one video, I'm going to speak to the rest of the NPCs that we need to talk to about the Neretes Folly War. And also, if you guys are not so sure which ones you've already met on this list, just press this button and it will tell you you've met. And it tells me I've already met these two people so far. So we know that we don't need to find these people. Okay, so we've just reached this castle and we've now found out that he was last seen near this small village not too far away. Probably about to raid it because the Empire owns it. So let's go and fast travel over there. So as we get closer to this village, we see that he is actually currently in a battle against some mounted cavalry from the Empire. I don't think we'll be able to speak to him right now because he's in a battle. So let's decide not to get involved and we'll just have to wait for this to finish. So it looks like he's winning, which is good because it means he won't be taken prisoner. Oh, unless this man also joins in. Okay, well, another 14 men have joined in. That's not really a problem. Okay, here we go. So now we can speak to him. He's got 168 men. He's currently tracking down the other guy. Stop right there, stranger. I bid you peace. At least until I find out who you are anyway. My name is Danny, sir. May I ask your name? I am Kalog, the High King of the Batanians. One thing that you should know is that I make a very good friend. And you absolutely do not want to be my enemy. I mean, we just saw what happened to your enemy, so I agree. Can you tell me anything about the battle for Pendrake? I'm a busy man, but there's always time to talk about the blessed battle of Pendraic. Our dear old beloved King Ariel, a wonderful man, but with a heart perhaps just a mite too tender. He did not wish for us to go off to war, but then he disappeared and I, his son-in-law, ascended to his kingship. The clans cried out for war. They had a hundred years of crimes against them to avenge. I, a father to my people, gave them what they wanted. Now the Empire uses tricks and traps in war. No Batanian fears to meet an Imperial soldier man to man, but we thought it would be a good laugh to use their tricks against them. So we laid an ambush on both, both sides of a wooded pass, and wouldn't you know, they marched right into it. It actually reminds that's based on a famous battle, um, like the tactics they use is very much like the Celtic, um, Celtic origins of their faction. They turned and twisted as our arrows rained upon them, like fish going frantic in a pond as you draw the net tighter. Then they were greatly discomforted. We took off of falxes and swords and reaped the harvest. <laughs> it's harvesting season. Oh, there were some unpleasantless later with the sturgeons about the spoils of war. But what a grand old day it was. Fantastic. So as you guys can see, we have now updated and we are three out of 10 nobles. And that's going to basically be all you do. It's very simple. It just takes you a long time to actually, you know, track down all the nobles. So I would suggest that you just kind of play the game. Um, not like I'm going to do in this episode where we just run through every single noble and talk to them all. Um, but just play the game in your own time and you'll slowly sort of come across them. And when you do see them, Try and go out of your way to actually speak to them because doing this quest and getting it done is obviously, you know, part of the main quest that we need to finish to continue the storyline of Mountain Blade. But I mean, this is a sandbox RPG, so you don't have to do that at all. We can see in his description that he is the ruler of Valandia. So that's like one of the important people that we need to speak to. Forgive me for what may seem like abundance of caution, but keep your distance. Just beyond sword length is fine. So, who might you be? My name is Danny. May I ask for your name? I am Durf Hurt, King of Valandians. I am Lord of Sargot and Galend. I shall mark your name, but you shall have to earn my trust, stranger, for the world is a treacherous place and these are treacherous times. Can you tell me about the battle for Pandrake? It was a victory of the kind that is almost as bad as a defeat. 
We had given oath to the Empire to join them if they attacked. It seemed clear to me that we should have honoured their oath, but the Batanians and Sturgeons were aggressors. But there is always room to argue details. Ultimately our barons did not want to fight with the Empire, so they resisted coming to its help. Nerites, when he heard we were hesitating, sent us a message calling us cowards and traitors. And you say that to a Valandian noble at your peril. Nerites should have known what he was doing. We joined the Sturgeons. What a traitor. I did not fight the battle. I stood on a hill telling my commanders where to go and who to attack. And we did rather well. I think you've heard. Still, we took our losses, heavy losses, and gained little. And for this the barons blamed me. Even though it was their idea to fight, I learned that day a king should always lead, never follow. But it was a bitter lesson. So now we know his backstory and what he was doing during the battle and our log has been updated. 4 out of 10 nobles so far. So now we have found Ragnvad. Your face is not known. What is your name, stranger? I am Danny. Who are you? I am Ragnvad, king of the Sturgeons. I know your name, and from what they say about you, I say that many grieving widows know too, but it is no concern of mine. I've already killed bandits. I wouldn't say there's any grieving widows. Can you tell me anything about the battle for Pandrak? Yes, my father died thanks to the Batanian treachery. So they're still like fighting against each other too. When they placed to support us in battle, we believed that they would stand with us in the shield wall, like men. But of course, it is not the Batanian way. They sprung some woodland trickery up in the hills, kicked off Nerites' vanguard, no doubt spent the rest of the battle whooping and boasting and chopping the heads off men who were already dead. It was the Sturgeons who met Nerites' grand force face to face. My father ordered me to stay back as he led them into battle, but he was at their head. He forced them back, and when they broke and ran for shelter of their camp, we went and attacked their ramparts, and we broke them. But my father was hit by an imperial mace at the moment of his triumph and died. I will never forget when a messenger ran to tell me that my father was dead. But I knew I must swallow my grief because now I was king. I rode down into the ruins of the imperial camp to take their banner as a trophy. My inheritance, won by my father and passed down to me. Oh, some of the boyars were insubordinate, but I have since so showed them that I am their master. Thank you. Thanks for telling us. Do you think this relic that we're carrying around is the crown? The lost crown or something of the battle? I think it could be, you know. Let's have a look who we want to speak to next. We've done 5 out of 10 nobles, so we are halfway there with talking to everyone. Uh, I'm actually quite enjoying going all the way through this, but boy, I'm only showing you the highlights of all the clips. It's taken me ages. Now, sometimes you end up needing to speak to a lord who might be inside a castle keep. So in this case, just obviously enter the castle. Then you can press go to the keep and it will tell you who's inside the keep. But usually when you try and enter a keep, you have to pay a 700 gold bribe to actually go inside there. I've already paid the bribe, so we can just head straight into the Lord's Hall and speak to this man here. And you guys will notice as you play the game, each one of the Lord's Keeps is going to be completely different in architecture depending where you are. So it's really cool to actually see each one of them. So this is Fadon. He'll be somewhere in this room. He's actually just reading. Now we've already met him, but I forgot to record this bit. So we can ask him about the Pandraic battle. I wasn't there. I know Lucian had some thoughts about it. Okay, so he is the ruler of the Northern Empire and apparently he's actually near Orthera. So that's actually not very far away from us at all. Phaedon also gave us a quest as well to sell on a mercenary contract for 2,500 gold to another lord. So we need to convince another lord to buy that contract off us as well. The noble leader we need to speak to is going to be around this village here. So let's head over there next. So the village is just here and we've just caught up with his lord's party. So we can try and cut him off here and have a conversation with him. That's close enough. Who are you? I am Danny. I am Lucon, rightful emperor of the Calradians. I am lord of Dithama, and I shall have my scribes take notes of your name. Okay, we can ask him about the battle though. Yes, I was a junior officer on Nerites' staff. People say much about the battle that betrays the lack of understanding for Nerites and the circumstances he faced. Nerites had an obligation to avenge the Batanian attack on our land. 
He marched out with all the forces he could gather. The Valadians betrayed us though, but that's what you expect from honourless barbarians. Fortune favoured the enemy. What matters is that we did what honour required. Perhaps Nerates was rash, sending our infantry up to the hills to storm the Batanian fort, but he thought he could grab the pass quickly, before the enemies had time to reinforce it. If he had made the other wager and that turned out to be wrong, people would have said he was hesitant. Yeah, you constantly get judged being a lord, don't you? I stayed with Nerators until we were forced back to our camp by the Sturgeon infantry, and then we fought to the battlements. Eventually we could hold them no longer. I did not see what happened to Nerates or our banner. Arionkos got us out of there, and got us home. I did not respect Arionkos before, but that day I saw he was worthy to be Emperor. Thank you. Okay, so we've got that whole backstory there and we've spoken to another one of the nobles we needed to speak to. However, we should also try and sell him the contract of the mercenaries. Do you need mercenaries? I have a contract that I can transfer for 2,420 denars. How are they though? Tell me about the details. Okay, so this is actually the persuasion thing, so I get to show you guys this, which is quite cool. Um, each persuasion attempt has like two different traits that it's attached to. So you can see if I say that they're cheap, disposable, and effective. What do you say? That's like a calculating um, choice. So that's a 74% chance of success, which is pretty good. I actually really like that they have this old school RPG sort of system. I always loved it in like the old Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, but then Bethesda removed it in Fallout 4. And I think it just really ruined like the old school RPG elements of being able to sort of convince people in such a way the new speech options were just never as cool in my opinion um so i'm glad that banner lord has stayed faithful to old school rpgs and has this in their game so let's go for the calculating option first as you can see we're successful you can also have a critical success which just gives you two points straight away you might be correct yes tell me about the details okay so now we're going to go for I won't kid you, they're mean bastards, but that's good if you can manage them. And we're going to go for the Valor option here. And we're successful, so he's actually brought some more troops off us, which is good because he's going to war, so I'm sure they'll help out. Hmm, they can be useful. And we've got 2,420 gold, and we now have a charm skill of level 8 as well. We got a lot of experience there. That was really good. Okay, perfect. My friends, we have a tournament taking place. Maybe we can impress some local lords. Let's join the tournament. Right, so we are in a battle round with a group of people. Let's go. At oh my god, I'm not even on a living mount though. Ha! Ha! Get wrecked, son. Oh my goodness. Trying to take this guy off the horse. I need your horse, buddy. Yep, okay, that's my horse now. Let's get a spear, let's get a spear. Right, there we go. Get on the horse. Very good, very good. Right, we can take out this guy. Oh, you're dead. You're dead. Who's left? Is there anyone left? Yeah, there's a guy over there. Charge him down, brothers. Aha, I've killed this horse anyway. He's on the ground. Go on, get him while he's down. One damage delivered. That was very good. There we go. Now he's dead. This spear is amazing. What is this spear? It's, it's a two-handed spear, but I do so much damage with it. It's crazy good. The only thing is, is not having a shield in an actual war is, like, super difficult. Right, let's, uh... And here we go. We are against another guy with a shield that's fully armoured, though. Whoa, how the hell do you hit that? Oh, Jesus. There we go. If you kind of tilt your camera around to the left, uh, where they don't have their shield, you kind of confuse the AI and they usually don't block. Haha, <laughs> you see what I mean? We just got a head hit in there. Okay, so we won that round. Fantastic. We have an archer and myself against... Here we go. Oh god, did you just die? No, please don't tell me that. Ugh! <laughs> 
Oh god! Take this guy out first. Don't rush it, don't rush it, come on. Oh yes, beautiful! 2v1, we did it! Nice, okay. Last round, here we go. Join. Here we go, we got this. He's got no armor on his head. He's skillful though. Not skillful enough. Oh, he dropped his shield at the last second. We deleted him. Oh my god, we won the tournament. <laughs> Fantastic, look at that. Renown gained, plus three. Judgment. We got a, a unique mace called Judgment. Let's have a look at that weapon there. We found Miss UI. Yours is not a face I know. My name is Danny. I am sure you have heard our name of our clan. We carry the name of ten sons of a giant she-wolf. Mother of the Keizu. Oh, she's a lady, I didn't realize. Can you tell me anything about the battle? I curse that name. It took from me my husband, two brothers, more cousins than I can count. The Kurgits were never the richest of the clans, but we make up for it with our valor. When the word spread that the Emperor was promising silver for men to ride by his side against the Sturgeons and Batanians, and others, of course, our young brave boys leapt at the chance. My husband, the bravest and best of them, led them. We found the Valadians, we won. But there was a great slaughter. My husband's horse was slain, and he was ridden down, though he died amid a pile of Valadian dead elsewhere on the field. The Emperor was having his head hewn off with a sturgeon axe, and thus was in no position to pay us. Such were the fortunes of war. But what came afterwards when word spread about what had happened to our manfolk, the other clans, Arkits in particular, knew we were weak. Our herds were raided, anyone who protested was killed. Monchug did little to help stop it. It taught us that valour will get you killed, but treachery will make you rich. Well said, well said. God, that guy's face though. <laughs> They're currently sieging a castle, which is quite exciting. I'm kind of tempted to join them. And now we are back in the desert. My god, it's been a long day trying to record this video for you guys and talk to everybody. But hey, we have found Unquid's army. So let's go and have a chat to him. At least we can catch him up right now. Stop there, stranger. My name's Danny. I'm Unquid, Sultan of the Azerai. I'm Lord of Kuaz. Can you tell me anything about the battle? It was a tragedy that gnawed the roots of all the great families of Calradia, even ours so far away from the battle. We heard that the Empire was making war on the Sturgeons, or maybe it was the other way around. I thought that we had no shake in this quarrel, but Namir, a fiery young hero from Bani Saren, asked for permission to take some young warriors, eager for glory. The Empire had left us alone for a while, and Nerates was off offering silver for men, so I thought, why not? Let them choose to help the Empire. I should have known. The best course with wars is to have little to do with them as you possibly can. For Namir went and fought and won glory, but also got a number of men killed, especially those of Bani Quild, and he became boastful and arrogant. And then, well, that was the beginning of the great feud between Sarians and Quilds, but the rest of the story I should perhaps leave for someone else. I actually really appreciate the background lore because I'm really starting to understand why the factions are at war now and it's really interesting. So thank you. But we are actually trying to find Adram, who apparently was last seen in his own settlement. Apparently he's not there currently though, so he must be out exploring the land around it. While we're here, let's actually just kill these bandits because they're right in front of the gates. So we can do... Oh my god, I'm inside my bear mask. How cool is that? Right, brothers, I would like you to charge in. And we're going to go in with our pole arm right here. Get wrecked. Oh, goodness me. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's not going well for us. Come on, man. I need your backup here. I'll just kite them around and shoot them like a boss. Get wrecked right in the back of the head there. Beautiful. Take them down, men. Well done. Well done indeed. We've got a squad of archers now as well, by the way. 
I've really been um, recruiting and upgrading my men and taking them into every single fight I can. Um, and we've got quite a lot of upgraded people and soldiers with us that used to be bandits. <laughs> so Adram is here in the keep and we can go and speak to him by clicking on him. Or we can just say go to the Lord's Hall which is where he's going to be chilling out. So here we are in the Lord's Hall of... Oh god it looks so cool. Each, each hall is like very different so... I really do appreciate the effort they put into making each thing culturally different. Who are you? Mara. Okay, well... Oh, right, he's sitting on his throne. I didn't even see him. He was blending in. I thought he was just like a cushion or something. Tell me your name. Forgive me. I'm Danny. I'm Adran of Banu Saran, a clan of Azurai. I am Lord of Hassin Folk. Can you tell me anything about the battle for Pandrak? There was never a proud moment of a Bani Saren. The bravest and most valiant son of our clan, Mimir, led a large group of Asari warriors to fight for the Empire for gold and glory. I went with them. When we saw the Batanian archers come down the hills, Mimir was ready. He gave the word. We held our shields above her heads as the arrows rained down, then threw our javelins and charged. We cut them down. Then the Valadian knights came. We were attacked on two sides, and the Empire, who could have sent men to save us, took his time. Perhaps he wanted the best of the Asari to die, lest we become too powerful later. But that betrayal was nothing compared to what we received from our fellow Asari, the Bani Quill. Namir returned in well-deserved glory. A daughter of the Bandi Quilled took an interest to him, and then they had a secret affair, as you sometimes do, as heroes do. But Namir's axe wounded the Quilled's pride. They kidnapped him, slew him and hung him in a cage in their markets. We will forgive the Empire and Valadians, but the Quilds? Better not ask me for that. Thank you. <laughs> He's so sulky. He's so angry. Look at him. Okay, guys, we have finally found Garius, and he's sitting inside this castle. So let's go ahead and approach the gates, say hello to the guards, and then we can request a meeting with Garius. Here he is. Oh my god, he's talking from down the battlements. Well, I don't believe we've met. Would you care to tell me your good name? My name is Danny. May I ask your name? I am Garius, rightful emperor of the Calradians. I am lord of those two cities, okay. The one thing about me you should know is that I make a great friend, but you don't want to mess with me. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pendrake? Yes. It's a day I never forget. The day we learned the old men who claimed they had the rights to rule us were dobbering incompetence. I was with the Vanguard. Neretes apparently knew that the Batanians... The Kazite scouts had told him, but he never bothered to inform us. So up we went along the old, lovely wooden stream, until Batanian arrows started whooshing in from all sides. And that is exactly how the Batanians describe the ambush themselves. We had our shields up, but you can only point them in one direction at once. So we just started to drop, one by one. Until the Batanian folksmen came screaming out of the trees. Ordinarily, they'd be very vulnerable to archers, but well, Old Neretes hadn't thought to send any along with us, so they came upon us, chopping and slashing, and we fought until we broke. It's almost like he wanted them to die, and he sent them to their deaths almost, which is interesting. I ran too, and any man who tells you they wouldn't in those circumstances is a liar. Well, I was sitting in the cold woods later that night, hiding with other fugitives, listening to the barbarians whoop and holler as they chopped off heads as trophies. I promised that no Caldarian soldier should again be led into battle by an emperor who knows so little of war. If you want more information, there are two people you might try and speak to. Fantastic! Estina worked as a sort of unofficial spy master to Neretes. She lives in that city, Eparotia. Uh, and then there was Aragos, who was his bodyguard. He's supposed to be near this other city, though I hear he's changed quite a bit since then. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. We finally <laughs> finished this quest line. Let's go ahead and leave. We don't need to stay around this castle. And now we have a new quest to do. Two new quests. Meek with Istania, who's the spy master, and Nerezim's old bodyguard as well. So which one of these locations is closest? Both of them are to the north, just over here. So they're not actually that far apart. And boy oh boy is the empire broken up now. But guys I'm going to end today's video right here. And next episode we will carry on the main questline and venture 
all the way over here. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I cut like a lot of the exciting battle parts out, but I really wanted to like just progress the storyline and uh, show you guys what was actually going on in the world. And we've really, you know, farmed up our party and created quite a devastating force of trained warriors now. So I'm pretty excited to carry on leveling these people um and continue to build a stronger force as we go on but i will link the next episode down below in the description if you wish to watch it and i'll see you there have a fantastic day and goodbye